my friends, Ernest Holmes, who gave the world the great teaching known as the science of mind and spirit, writes in his book, Journey into Life, and I quote, today the horizon is clear, the voyage starts anew, we are reborn. The true resurrection is not only from this life into the next, it takes place daily and hourly as we shed the limited concepts of life and come into the vineyard to gather the fruit of the spirit hanging rich from the vines of God, Unquote. The fruits of the spirit hanging rich from the vines of God. What a legacy, what, what a wonderful imagery. You know, we have a mango tree growing uh, in, the, in the open area, common area beside my house. And when it is laden, you can just reach up and pick the ripe and juicy fruit. And that's what God has offered to us, its beloved sons and daughters, the fruits of the Spirit, low-hanging fruit that we can pick. And then, of course, there are loftier, sometimes even more juicy expressions of God higher up in the tree of consciousness. And that is the fruit that Jesus, the way shower, reached up and picked and offered us as his gift to all humanity, the fruit of our divinity, of our Christhood, of our sonship and daughtership with Almighty God. So my friends, let us view the Easter story in the context of Jesus' teaching of the divinity to which we are all heirs. You can think of the resurrection happening then as giving greater meaning to your life. Perhaps this is what Jesus really meant when he said, and I quote, except one be born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, verse 3, except one be born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And this kingdom about which the master speaks is within as well as all around us. So when we are born again, nothing really happens in the three-dimensional, five-sensory world in which we live. It is a rebirth of the spirit, of that spark of divinity within us, which knows and knows that it knows that we are divine, that we are indeed the beloved expressions of something so awesome, so beautiful, so powerful. Ernest Holmes said there is a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. And I have discovered in my ministry that this power for the universe, in the universe, can also use us. If we will just open the gates of the temple of our lives and let this teaching take us higher and higher as we rise up in consciousness to the understanding that we are indeed overcomers of this world. Holmes states, and I quote, a person may be reborn, remade, and renewed in mind and body just through taking a little time to get acquainted with his better self just through coming to recognize the invisible and almost unknown guest who accompanies everyone through, the, through life. And this presence is the spiritual presence within, unquote. You know, in our, our program in the adult correctional facilities here in Kingston, participants in that program, and we call it Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, and we just started four weeks ago after the pandemic lockdown. And I can tell you, it, it, was, it was like a triumphal entry for me. Participants that had been in the program were waving their hands through the bars of their cells and saying, sparkle the teacher, sparkle the teacher. I thought of the Palm Sunday experience. But my friend, friends, 
people incarcerated spend such a long time and a lot of their time focusing on how awful it is. And believe me, it is awful. Some are not only imprisoned by bricks and stone and bars of steel, they are imprisoned by blame, shame, and regret. And you know, during the, the, the lockdown for pandemic, those men at Tower Street didn't see their loved ones, their families, their children, their friends for close to two years. And so one of the things that we always ask at that program is to just to get their minds off of God, how awful, tell us even just one thing that you are grateful for. And at one of those programs, one of the participants at Tower Street shared a resurrection experience which moved me beyond words. He said, you want to know what I'm grateful for, Rev? I am grateful to be incarcerated. I say, what, well, what do you say? You're grateful to be in your, because in my mind, you know, you, I, I didn't say it out loud, but you know, this is hell, you know, they said the master descended into hell which is a state of consciousness. He said, yes, I'm grateful. He said, I was on the, he's not, he's not more than, he wasn't at the time more than about 24 or 25. This is a young man. He said, I was on the most wanted list. He said, anything you read in the newspaper about me wasn't even 10% of the evil that I was doing. He said, and I thank God every day that they apprehended me. Because if I wasn't in here, I'd be in a pine box. So I said to him, this young man is a model participant and resident at Tower Street. He's a leader. He's, he's an inspiration, even to the prison officers. I said, tell me, how did you move from somebody on the most wanted list, somebody who's, who's axed, as you have said in your own words, wasn't even 10% of what you were, of, of what we know wasn't even 10% of what you were, you were capable of. How did you move from that to being the model, the role model that you are for the other people who are incarcerated? How did you become a light and an instrument of peace? In what for many people is indeed a hellish experience. He said, I had an experience which changed my life. I said, evidently, what was it? He said, I was in the lockup and a policeman gun butted me with his, the butt of his gun in my face and I fell backwards and my head hit the edge of a desk and it just opened a huge gash and I was bleeding profusely. I fell to the ground and I was bleeding and out of that wound poured anger and hatred and the need for revenge. Just watch till me get out here what me I gonna do with you and anyone that have anything to do with you. And listen to what happened. A police woman, a young police woman evidently, in a spanking new uniform, picked him up and put his head in her lap. And you know somebody's in your lap and she put her hand on his chest and was rocking her knees from side. My God, my, my friends, it's, it's always the woman, eh? God bless you. I'm telling you it's the woman. In a police station in Kingston, Jamaica, a police woman, just that picture for me is of the picture of Jesus across the knees of Mary in that beautiful sculpture by Michelangelo, the Pieta. Same thing pictured, out pictured. And as she put her, hands on, her hand on his heart, he said, I felt the shift. I felt the change come over me physically. Wow. And he said, when I got up, 
I got up not just physically, I stood up spiritually and said, Father God, you have prepared me for something special. My friends, God is preparing each of us for something special. And my prayer is that we don't have to go through an experience that may be dark, a dark night of the soul, in order to awaken to the truth of our spiritual magnificence. But I know for sure that we have an assignment. And that young man became an instrument of peace in the prison facility. And his words and the image of the Pieta stayed with me for the entire week. And so the next week, I printed the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi and took it for him. And I said, hmm, this is your prayer. This was written for you. And I want you to say it every day. So let me say it for you, my friends, because this prayer is perhaps what we can use to prepare us for the mission that we have come to undertake on this journey we call life. The prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Our temple singers will give voice to this beautiful prayer in a little while, but I mention it here because it is the basis of your assignment this Easter Sunday. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to Google the prayer of St. Francis and say it every morning for the next 10 days. I say 10 because there are about 10 lines, and I want you to read the prayer through each morning and then take the first line and ask yourself how you can be what that line is asking. So the first line says, anybody remember? And the next? Love. So first line, what am I going to be, to become, to be an instrument of peace? And just journal about that for yourself. You have asked God to make you an instrument of peace. How is that going to show up in your life, in how you relate to people, in what you do and say and, and speak at work, on the streets? and at home. And then, how am I going to, next day, be the love that I have asked God to create in me? How am I going to live from this consciousness of love? Maybe I need to see a minister or a practitioner to get some prayer support for this journey, for this mission, for this undertaking. So every day, just choose one line and ask yourself how you are going to make that a reality in your life. And then at the end of the 10 days, I want you to reread the prayer in the first person voice so that you would say, Lord, I am an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, I am sowing love. Where there is injury, Pardon. 
Where there is doubt, I'm sowing faith. Where there is despair, I bring hope. Where there is darkness, I shine the light. And where there is sadness, I bring the joy of the risen Christ to all whom I encounter. O oh, Divine Master, thank you for teaching me how to console, how to understand, to love, for I know that it is in giving that I am receiving your bounty. It is in pardoning that I too am pardoned. And it is in dying to all the foolish, human, materialistic, ego-centered things that I am born today to eternal life. My friends, Reverend Bob Arrott, in an article titled Beyond the Cross, writes, and I quote, regardless of the challenges we may be facing individually in our daily lives, let alone the many problems of the world which could easily depress anyone who lets himself get caught up by them, just knowing this truth, the truth that life always has more to express in, through, and as each one of us, and dedicating ourselves to live higher levels of living until we reach the ultimate expression of life, which is pure joy. This is our destiny, and that is what makes the Easter message so glorious. The Easter story, then, is a demonstration that you have the power to overcome the dark night of the soul, to go beyond the end of things, financial loss, the breakup of relationships, the loss of a job, the death of a loved one, to go beyond all the human experiences to new opportunities and a new vision of overcoming. And so we make our Easter prayer, Lord, make us instruments of thy peace. Let us listen with our hearts to the temple singers as they, as they give us the beauty of their voices to this beautiful prayer. <coughs> Let us say together, I am an instrument of God's peace. I am an instrument of God's peace. In a half voice, I am an instrument of God's peace. In a whisper, I am an instrument of God's peace. Now say it in your heart. And so it is. 
My friend Ernest Holmes puts it like this, quote, we should resurrect ourselves to the joy and simplicity and spontaneity of life and leave the corpses of our dead yesterdays in the tomb of their own obscurity. We should live more abundantly in God this day. When we come out of our tomb of ignorance and disbelief, how glorious shall be the dawn. Today, all of Christendom sings, Christ the Lord is risen. It was our introit. Ha, 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 hallelujah. I do not want you to miss or mistake the point, my friends, the deep implication of this rising, of this Easter anthem, because it is your anthem, it is your song, it is your hymn of praise, it is your rising up to the highest point of your own consciousness to become an instrument of God's peace. May you rise in this consciousness as you allow God to be the heart of your way and the way of your heart. Happy Easter. Namaste.